very much for joining us for our Climate Watch update for the month of November and also taking a look at how summer is kicking off. It's brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz. Well, so far, the month of October was very up and down. We had certainly the peak winds coming through. Uh, we also had, and that was especially around our general election, it was a very windy day. And the temperatures have been all over the place, but generally leaning a little bit warmer than average. You may not all believe that, but it has been leaning warmer. And in the tropics, we had Cyclone Lola, which was the earliest Category 5 cyclone ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere. It fell apart and then it came back to life again and brought that wind and rain to northern parts of New Zealand at the end of the month. So the remnants of that system are lying here on the map. It's almost completely gone by the 1st of November. Behind it comes another low out of the Tasman, more your usual November kind of low pressure zone, not an X cyclone, put it that way. So this will move through in the first week of November and bring some more wet weather. But if you track further along and go towards the Indian Ocean, high pressure, more high pressure. So there's a lot of high pressure coming into the forecast, but at the same time, we are seeing low pressure, like we see to the north here of Australia and out to the west. Another low here just off the coast of Brisbane, which by the way was what merged with the remnants of Lola last week. Not that same low, but another one in the same place. So we've got a little bit of an unusual pattern. El Nino is certainly here on a global Pacific wide point of view, but from a weather point of view, Australia and New Zealand are seeing some strange things about to come up or already happening in New Zealand. And that's due to a couple of reasons. One, our location on Earth, the equator is off the screen, Antarctica is just here. So we're halfway between the two. So our weather patterns in New Zealand are always dominated by what's going on out of the Southern Ocean. But we've got warmer than average temperatures in our sea surface conditions at the moment as well. So we're gonna talk about that in a moment because that is actually partially breaking the forecast. And rather than people just going, oh, so much for El Nino, which some New Zealanders are doing, you're better to actually look at the big picture and understand why it's not behaving the way you think it might be at the moment and why that could still change. El Nino doesn't peak until this point here. So if you drop down and have a look, that's the end of December going into January. So we're still a couple of months away from the peak of El Nino and we're in the peak of spring. And those who watched our last Climate Watch update, we said that El Nino plus spring can make spring even more spring-like in our part of the world. So we're still in El Nino, but the tracking here shows it's getting stronger as we go into summer and then it gradually comes back down again by the time we get to uh, the middle to later part of autumn. So it could well be with us right through to winter of next year. So it's just good to understand that. So this is where we are at the moment, leaning in towards El Nino. It gets stronger once we get to January 2024. So when spring starts to wind down and we get more high pressure systems, which is usually what we get with El Nino, uh, we may well be seeing drier weather coming through as we get into the summer period. And then it eases back a little bit into March, but March takes us back to sort of where we are now. So we've still got a few more months to go on this global situation. And then on the other side of Australia, the Indian Ocean Dipole, which is like the Indian Ocean's version of La Nina and El Nino, and it's kind of in the El Nino phase, what we call the positive IOD. That means Australia is dry from both sides, um, more likely to be anyway. The good news is, it is getting back to neutral as we go through our summer coming up, which means there'll be a little bit more rain, hopefully, on the eastern side of the Indian Ocean, and that can also feed in towards New Zealand. So this is how they measure El Nino. One of the ways to measure it is the sea surface conditions and the anomaly. How much warmer or cooler is it compared to usual? It is pretty clear to see that the eastern side of the Pacific, measured right here on the equator, is three or four degrees above normal. So that's the reason why you keep hearing about this being a strong El Nino. It's measured over here. But what is unusual about this one is that it's warmer than average directly north of New Zealand. That doesn't always happen or doesn't usually happen with El Nino. And it's milder all the way across. On top of that, while this is normal in the Coral Sea to be average or slightly below average temperature wise, and that actually does reduce the risk of rain into Queensland, which I think you're noticing. But as you go down the coastline, see the red? off New South Wales. Well, you've got a couple of weeks of downpours on the way and this warmer 
uh, conditions or these warmer sea conditions in the southeastern corner of Australia will certainly help trigger more downpours once you've got low pressure in the area. You need the highs to clear away, but once that happens, you can get the, some heavier rain. And in the New Zealand area, it is getting closer to average, but still these little pockets that are warmer than usual. So Lola formed up in this area where it's well above average. It then died, the cyclone died as it came into the cooler waters, and then it came back to life again a little bit down around New Zealand because it merged with a low coming out of these warmer waters. So El Nino is certainly here, but it's going to be a little different to the ones you've experienced in the past, which is why it's important to understand what makes it different. So as you look here at the local marine heat wave, this is thanks to the Moana project uh, and part partially from Met Service and Met Ocean. You can see that a lot of New Zealand sea temperatures are back to normal. A couple of areas a little bit warmer than average, uh, as you can see around the North Island, but generally it's looking pretty good. And that's what we want to see. It's good for our marine life to actually have it closer to normal. So let's take a look at the month ahead. What is happening with the air pressure systems? Obviously we saw some tropical life uh, in the last month. This month coming up, I think we're seeing more in the way of variety, but also an uptick in high pressure. So that means it's a bit of a messy map to look at, not orderly, but you'll be noticing, I think, plenty of high pressure kind of in this area here. And this is what El Nino tends to do. And it also tends to push a bit more high pressure out into the Tasman Sea. Obviously not for the first week though. This is this gap that we've got between the highs at the moment. So yes, a little bit of low pressure coming through and also some low pressure up here around Western Australia and the Northern Territories. So as we move into week two, the big blocks of high pressure are tracking along into the New Zealand area, but still mixed in, we have some low pressure, which means rain is still going to be coming through, but it just may start to taper off a little bit from where we've been, especially now that we've passed what is traditionally the peak of spring, which is October. November usually sees more high pressure coming through, but the extra warmth means you can still get a low pressure zone bubbling up a bit like that one there. And then there's another one over here towards Western Australia. And we move through to week three. And again, you notice there's a fair bit of high pressure in the map, but there's still low pressure out here in Western Australia and still plenty of low pressure down here in the Southern Ocean. So windy westerlies, blowing across there in week three. Usually, as we head in towards an El Nino summer, it dries out at the top of the country and stays unsettled at the bottom part. So let's quickly take a look at the rain that's coming up. First of all though, what has fallen? The soil moisture mats from uh, Niwa. Now, it's a bit of a shame, they delay the data for their own commercial reasons, which is totally wrong for a science agency to do. So we're looking to find an alternative um, through some satellite technology, which is really cool. So. Give us some time, but we're working on it. However, this shows, even though it's delayed, it does show you what we've been getting. And look how messy it is. Blues show wetter than average for soil moisture levels, and the orange shows the other way around. Now, I think this is not capturing the rain that just fell in East Cape, which is why it's frustrating they delay it for commercial reasons at their end. But you can see the blue mixed up around the country shows we've had plenty of variety with our weather which while frustrating if you're trying to get a nice weekend or mow the lawns or doing something outside, it is very good news for where we're going into summer. Uh, it means that the chance of drought and dry conditions are reduced because of the rain you've got now, at least for the start of summer. So hopefully that gives you just a little bit of relief. Now, this is coming up for the next 15 days. And you can see this on our website as well if you need to look a bit closer. These are afternoon downpours around Hawke's Bay. So up to 100 millimetres there, but or even more. But that will be likely in the mountains and ranges and it'll move around on the sea breeze. So not everyone will get them. West Coast, that's more traditional rain coming through. And also notice the drier conditions. You may not be able to, but it's at the lower end of the key. So even though we are still seeing some cooler and wetter weather in Southland, uh, it won't be as wet maybe compared to where you've just been for the last few weeks. And the big picture across Australia and New Zealand shows, again, this is an unusual thing to be seeing in an El Nino spring, especially the later part of spring. Uh, some good rain totals, hopefully, between Brisbane and just south of Sydney, most of it between Sydney and Tamworth. Um, a little bit of it will spill over into inland areas like Bathurst and Orange uh, and Dubbo and places like that. You'll get a little bit. And further northwards, it dries out. So Queensland's still in that borderline area 
for getting some relief. Now, the three month rainfall, this is from IBM and WeatherWatch, combining all the computer modeling into one picture. And I know there's red on this map, please ignore the red. It was a glitch uh, with the graphics, unfortunately. So that red means nothing. The, the orange shading you see over the North Island and the yellowy shading here, that is a sign of leaning drier and the green at the bottom leaning a little wetter, which is pretty much what we were saying a few months back and even back in winter. That's how we were expecting it to be uh, laying out over the months ahead. So drier weather or more dry weather is expected to increase over the North Island but still wetter than usual for that southern corner, including Southland. And this is unusual. Over here in New South Wales, for an El Nino spring for November, uh, that's a pretty unusual. And of course, this is not just November, but December, January as well. So if this comes true, this is not so problematic for Australia, at least not for New South Wales, and maybe Victoria could be dry, so could Queensland. So let's not get too excited. But there could be some thunderstorms and some wet weather coming through there, uh, some good news. Hopefully that does happen. And temperature wise, departure from normal. Again, warmer than average across Australia and New Zealand. As parts of New Zealand may not be quite so bad down in the western and southern areas as you get those winds off the sea. And occasionally those southwesters will move up and across both islands. And so temperatures will drop a little bit with that. But they only have to turn from a southwester to a westerly and all of a sudden our temperatures are all above average. It's a very slight change. So that's why New Zealand's on the edge of the El Nino weather pattern. We can see a lot of change coming up with these big highs in the mix, but also low pressure systems are all throughout our weather map. So even though the high pressure seems to be dominating uh, over the next few weeks, we're not out of the you know, rain yet. And so that gives farmers and growers optimism as we go into summer and for holiday makers, who don't care maybe so much about that side of things, um, hopefully there's still some good weather coming in for you as well. That is all for Climate Watch this month. Back again in four weeks' time, of course, going into December then, so that's critical at the holidays coming up. So look forward to seeing you one month from now.